What is up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. It's a beautiful day in May. I'm sorry I haven't been making very con consistent updates, but life's been busy. Got some cool news here, to me at least. So, I have in my pocket these. So what has a key like that? A door that unlocks like that, yet still a touch of modern day technology. Well, we got the Silverado right there. We got the F-150 right there. And guess what's back? The Trans Am is back. All right. <laughs> I've been waiting for this. Oh. Finally just got this car out of my buddy's storage place about two days ago. Haven't driven it yet. Matter of fact, just a moment ago, I just set up the uh, registration, so it's good and legal again. <laughs> Yeah, and as you can see, my garage is a little bit of a tight fit because I still do actually work inside my garage and do uh, some stuff. But the car is back and ready to roll. Luckily, it didn't get too filthy while it was parked as well. Uh, let's see here. God, that's some tight gap there, though. I think the rear end's a little too low, but I also think that the rear Eibach Pro Kit Springs kind of gave in a little bit. However, I had bought that setup used. We got the tires that were in the back up front. Brand new tires in the back, so I'm gonna try to not be too spin happy. But yes, it's great to have her back. Got the uh, Tech Check sticker still from uh, Beaver Spring Dragway, the last time I was down that way. Doesn't have a year on it, so I don't know when that was. But I feel like I went down there one time last year at least. Exhaust tips are a little bit dirty, still from when I initially did my final cleanup and parked it. Uh, license plate, a little bit dirty underneath that cover. I don't think I did my little uh, double-sided tape trick to keep water out on that. But, oh yeah. <sighs> Heavy doors. That great 90s... GM quality plastic right there for you. Crack door panel there. Uh, that door has two cracks on it. That really sucks. <laughs> Car has white face gauges. I think the guy I bought it from put them on. Uh, you ever see these uh, steering columns in these cars? I don't, <laughs> I don't know if the camera picked that up. But that's just crazy how loose that is. The steering wheel is very thin compared to most modern cars. Kind of don't like that. I put a uh, fire chicken, whatever they want to call it, the bird logo. I put that knob on there just because I like its aesthetics. I keep the factory hearst inside the car because it has that nice notch. I put that on when we go drag racing because the shifts are a little bit better. <laughs> this car is so great and I love it so much but the build quality of it is just so sad I'm gonna stop rambling a little bit for it and I'm gonna do the good part fire it up sounding pulley. The exhaust sounds great on it. Motor sounds really healthy. It's your 5.7 LS1. Stock manifold, stock downpipes. Uh, GMMG catback. Now those headers I have up on the wall over there are the ones that are going to be going in it at some point whenever that time is ready to happen. Along with some other motor things. I'm going to do poly motor mounts. I got spark plugs. I'm going to do the MSD 8.5 mil spark plug wires. LS6 intake. I'm going to do an EGR air emissions delete. The wide pipe I have is a Cooks off road wide with the updated merge. But that's going to flow a lot better than the uh, TSP 3 inch wide that I had. And 
unfortunately my headers on the wall they are uh, one and three quarter inch I'm gonna use them anyway I would have probably picked one and seven eighths if I did buy them new but I think it's gonna be just fine let's pull it out God, that pulley sounds like crap. It's actually embarrassing to film it right now with that pulley squeaking like a little bitch. Well, there's the, uh, you can tell they were the rear tires at one point. <laughs> They're probably gonna be due for a change soon enough, so I may end up putting them back in the back and finishing them off. <laughs> this is the best part of summer right here, having this car back. I must say, it matches the Silverado very nicely as well. Kind of a bit better than Cobalt did. The story about when I was about to buy this car, I was really iffy on it. It was clean, very, very clean. Uh, it was in 2015. A guy in uh, Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania had it. Moved up from Mechanicsburg area, down the state a little bit ways. And I guess he was just selling off some of his toys. I ended up getting it from him with 88,000 miles for 11,900. And very clean, well, the only mods on it at the time, he had it tented, so I didn't have to do that. And he had the SLP lid on it. Other than that, I did the lowering on it. I did many numerous UMI suspension parts underneath. It has a UMI adjustable torque arm, lower control arms, subframe connectors. I just did very minor aesthetics. I like this. The 2002 collector edition size and font and bird logo versus the original smaller kind. There's chips on both ends of the spoiler. I'm not 100% sure why I bought it like that. I'm just going to assume taking the T-top off while the hatch was open. Possibly bumped it. It's going to be my guess on because there is chips on both sides like I mentioned. <laughs> The T-top is awesome in its own, man. I mean, nothing comes like that anymore. And I still love them. <laughs> the third generation cars, they had a much wider T-top, like a bigger roof span. But that was cool. Oh man, I just made a dust print. And the second generation was even more crazy than that. They were freaking huge. <laughs> These Ram Air stripes were on the hood. The guy I bought it from said he put those on. I did the Zevo. 3157 amber blinker bulbs because of the overheating issue that these housings have and I also bought new depot housings. I'm thinking about putting the uh, putting clear markers in there. That's gonna be my intent. I really love that being having the black overlay on it. It just matches it so perfectly. I need to rebuild that headlamp motor. That one comes up, but sometimes that stays down, but the light comes on. These moldings here, I like them. It's rare that people like them, I guess, but I do. But the uh, yellow is coming through a little bit. Probably gonna end up doing a repaint. Okay, I'm not 100% sure what happened, but if somehow that video that I was just making in the blue shirt got screwed up. I don't think I have much faith in this GoPro. I figure I'll film the rest of it right now and take it for a drive crawling through my neighborhood because my streets in my neighborhood suck. Pennsylvania life.
that's um, spot that I film at the trucks just because I can park in the middle of the road because it's a dead end road. Nobody goes there. Now as I was saying with that other video, I was uh, looking at a couple of these cars. The one I, uh, I really wanted a red one real bad because everybody seems to have black. But I saw this roll up after the guy contacted me from, uh, I think it was LS1 Tech. Well, he was on there, but he uh, messaged me through Facebook. But anyway, he had this in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, which is about like 120, 130 miles southeast of me. And, I mean, it looks great. I mean, I like it. <laughs> I never thought I would like silver so much, but it has such a nice gleam and nice shine. The condition of the car was so nice. I mean... I think nobody ever smoked in it. There's no burns. It's very clean inside for the age of the car. It's 18 years old. <laughs> Insane. So that's why I also don't want to modify it like so far that I can't even enjoy it, you know? I want to be able to enjoy driving it because to me that's what this car is. It's road therapy. I want to get in. I want to drive it. I want to have some fun with it. And I just want to cruise with it. It's so good just to drive it around, you know. And the uh, awesome Ram Air package on it. I mean, it gives a distinct look. Then you get your fanboy badge in the back, the WSX badge. <laughs> the factory 17x9s with a 275 4017. I have the Nitto NT555s on this because the guy I bought the car from put them in the back. It had some weird off-brand tires up front. That kind of shunned me, but I, he never put them on. They were from the owner he bought it from. That guy had this car for 12 years, I believe, according to what the Carfax info said with the history. And me, I mean, I've got it almost up to 102,000 miles. I bought it at 88, like I just said a little bit ago. And I've done a suspension modification. I lowered it. So it's got the Eibach Pro Kit springs. It's got the Bilstein HD shocks. It's got UMI lower control arms, adjustable pan hard bar, adjustable UMI torque arm relocated off the trans and uh, UMI subframe connectors only the two piece I'm gonna probably change them out for the three piece so I don't know how well I can get a shot of uh, underneath especially being in low light but I don't know it's gonna be hard might just be easier to post a picture that I have of the car up on my buddy's left so anyway I was looking at a red WS6 out in Scranton, Pennsylvania at the time. It was a 2002 six-speed. Had a boiler cap back and the guy was working on it a little bit. Got it modified some. Nothing extensively crazy. He changed motor mounts apparently. I uh, was gonna do headers. Had a boiler cap back. Probably the adjustable setup because it had those intercooler looking tips. And I mean, for one, the guy pulled up and cut somebody off. And then he took me for a ride in it and he left the parking lot sideways. So we're going, I'm like hanging on for my life. I don't know who you are. <laughs> kind of frightening, you know what I mean? Then uh, <laughs> we go up a hill and he does a clutch dump and he's going up the fucking hill sideways. I'm like, okay, I don't think this is the car I'm gonna buy. Oh, and to top it all off, he pulled up smoking a cigarette. So I already knew the car was not gonna be that clean. No. <laughs> Terrifying ride. The car would look good, but I mean, it was still dirty. Looked probably like I avoided a big fixer upper car. So I bought this. I mean, I haven't really had to do anything to it. I changed the fuel filter and I've changed the oil. That's all the maintenance. You can consider the tires, but I also smoked the one pair off. And I have driven it fun. You know, I've taken uh, curves, corners. I've tried getting it sideways. I've done a couple donuts. Nothing nothing too bad, but you know, it's still wear. Oh, and the uh, power antenna. Like, that's basically the difference with Pontiac. They try to get all the fancy gizmos and whatnot with your flip-up headlamps and your power up and down antennas. That went bad on me, so all last year was standing up the whole time. But I got one out of a part-out car and I changed it just before I stored it last year. So that's all fixed up and good to go. And this 20% tint looks great on the silver. Perfectly. 
especially for the T-tops. You got all this glass. Had a sun visor. Very nice. I also had to do a little bit of work on the gap here. I think it was just a couple washers I used to make it match this side because this one was awfully low. If you actually can see, there's a wear mark in the paint. But oh well, bugs. That's the car and I love it. I'll show, like everybody complains about the GM interiors from this generation of uh, GM vehicles, yeah, they do suck a bit. But I'll show off the interior a little bit just to get a little bit of the detail. So I did the uh, delete plates for the visors, so I got rid of those because they kept flopping down. That one actually would fly all the way down when I hit the brakes really hard. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, two cracks in this door panel. Not 100% sure of the good way to fix, other than find non-crack panels and fix them before they break. Dash pad, tip top, good shape, no crack so far. Lovely factory head unit. <laughs> this trim piece doesn't want to stay seated. Shift boots in really good shape. <laughs> this actually rattles a little bit, so this is an old receipt. <laughs> I put that in there and it kind of keeps it nice and uh, quiet. The gauges are pretty good. They're not like uh, cheap, nasty, bad font gauges. They're pretty neat, decent. And your headlamp switch, toggle and all that. Hard plastic everywhere. The bolstering in the seats is pretty cool. I didn't realize that these uh, cars had powered bolsters. Like they pump air into the sides here and they flex. I didn't realize they've done that since I think back to 87 in the GTA days. T-tops are awesome, love them. Kind of wish there was more room and gap, like the uh, I, how I mentioned the older generations, but I think it's because this roof line had to be angled at that angle, and they did what they did so they could put the windshield out further and get that angle slope that they needed. Rear view visibility is really good, even with that spoiler, much better than the Cobalt SS spoiler ever was. And not much room in the back. I mean, if you're a short person, you're fine. Better than a Mustang, and that's not a Mustang crack. I'm serious. Mustang rear seats are by far worse than these. And back trunk area, you got that little flap that goes over. Decent amount of storage. Not like a Corvette, though. Corvette is much better with storage. And as far as like usability, I mean, I just I put my wallet here and my phone in the door panel. That's really all the best storage you have. And here, I mean. It's okay. 
Here's these pieces of junk that strip out your uh, safety lock nuts. And I got the uh, Hurst shifter, like I said. Just screw it off, screw it on for track reasons only. I keep in my glove box uh, my fastest time slip. So this was me. Obviously, there's nobody over here anyway. So I ran a 2.31 reaction time. A 2.1 second 60 foot, 8.725 eighth mile, a quarter mile of 13.393 at 105. So that was my best as of now with basically the suspension work, street tires, and the GMNG cat back and the SLP led smooth bellow. Nothing extravagant, especially to today's standards. I always get my ass whooped going to the track, but <laughs> it's all in good fun. I mean, the interior is obviously one, but I really don't care much about it as long as stuff works, which it does, it's fine. It's a comfy enough place to be. The seats, I kind of wish they were a little more solid. I mean, like you saw me jiggling the seat. That was pretty sad. Air conditioning is great. I probably rarely ever get out used because of the T-tops. Nothing wrong with that. The turn signal stock, it's, it's a plastic version of the old school stock. 